Well, thank you for coming tonight. How many know you could have been somewhere else doing something else? <laughs> Sleeping sounds pretty good to me at this stage of the game. It's been about 50 hours now, but other than that, what the heck? Sleep's overrated, I think. You know, importantly tonight, <clears throat> I could be at home, and it happens to be daytime now, and I've got a lovely swimming pool in the backyard looking out over a little lake, and I've got a lovely wife that decorates the pool and all that kind of a thing. But it was important for me to be here with you. I've been studying and have just written a new course, a four-hour course, that's an, uh, both an update to, but a whole new area within glyconutrient technology. And what I have learned in the process of doing that has made me more excited about the potential we have to help change lives than just about anything I've done in the last number of years. I mean, I've always been excited, but seeing the potential we have now is just awesome. And we're going to talk about that a bit tonight. Now, Dr. Nugent was here not too long ago, and he went over the core five products. And we know that in order for this body of ours to be as healthy as it can be, to have the health, wellness, and quality of life, there's certain nutrient requirements that it has. Pure biochemistry has nothing to do with Manatech or any other company. What does the body require? Pure biochemistry. Then we look to see, are we getting what we need from our diet? If it's missing or deficient, what's going to be a cost-effective way of putting that back into the diet? And so tonight, we're going to be going through not that, because Dr. Nugent did a fabulous job, but we're going to look at some other areas that are more targeted. In a simple way of putting it, <clears throat> when we look at the five different nutrient categories, vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, the uh, essential fatty acids, hormone endocrine type support things, and glyconutrients, virtually all of the cells in the body are going to be benefiting from that. And yet there are certain parts of the body that have some special requirements in addition to that. And we're going to look at how we can benefit this body of ours by doing some of those things. So let me ask a question here. What is human lifespan supposed to be? Genetically speaking, what is our human lifespan? 120 years. Now, is that kind of amazing? The body genetically is designed to do 120. Now, when we talk about life expectation, that's a bit of a different equation, though. So what is life expectation? Here in Australia, for instance. 80-ish? Well, you're close. 81.81 years. <clears throat> that makes you number nine in life expectancy in the world. Anybody wonder who number one is? Monaco. Where? Monaco. Not too many people there, but their average age is 89, 93 for women, and uh, like 88 or 87 for the men. But that's kind of an interesting thing. However, how about New Zealand? Well, they were number 23, and they're kind of close to you. They don't even have all the poison bugs and everything that you guys have. <laughs> Singapore, where I'm heading after I get done with New Zealand, was number seven at 82. They beat you guys out a bit. How about the United States? Where do you think we rank? <laughs> now, in the U.S., we spend more money per person on health care than any country in the world. And we ranked number 50. Throwing money at problems isn't always the answer. We also, with less than 5% of the world population in the U.S., we consume 39% of all the prescription drugs sold in the entire world. But we're number 50. Bosnia beats us, you know, I mean, things like that. It's crazy. <clears throat> if you're wondering where you don't particularly want to live, Angola doesn't look too good, does it? So that's, that's not exactly a good number. And unfortunately, many of the African countries are 50 or less. Now, I don't know that it's all disease because there's so much war stuff going on down there. But it, as we look around the world, we're seeing that on one end, well, we're living longer than we used to. At least, you know, it seems like we are. But then the question comes up, how about your health span? You know, does it matter how long you live if you're not feeling too perky along the way? So are we living longer or are we dying longer? 
Are we preserving health or just preventing death? Are we optimizing wellness or just managing our problems? Now, we doctors do the best job that we can do. Doctors are highly trained individuals. They're incredibly brilliant and smart. I know I are one, you know. <laughs> but the point is, when we make it all about the doctor, you sick, me fix, we've left out a very important part of the equation. We're going to look at that tonight. Dr. Olshansky was actually interviewed by one of your radio personalities down here at this conference out in San Francisco back in 2001. These guys are experts in the anti-aging and life uh, enhancing kind of thing, you know, how long can we live? And he was asked the question, how long do you want to live, Dr. Olshansky? And he says, I think fundamentally that's the wrong question to ask. I don't care how long I live, quite frankly. We should be more focused on enhancing the quality of the days that we have. Anybody agree with that kind of a thought? I mean, being sick and yet still here, I don't know if that's a blessing. What's really important is not how long we live, but how healthy we are along the way. My answer to that question is, I don't care as long as I'm healthy for as long as possible during the time in which I'm alive. We're going to find that a whole lot of that has to do with how the body was designed to work. But not only how it was designed to work, but are we doing and giving it, supplying it with exactly what it needs to work that way. Are there any carpenters in here? Okay. You're a good carpenter, I'll bet. Now, <clears throat> I also bet you can read a good set of blueprints, okay? So you could have a perfectly good set of blueprints to this building. You're a good carpenter. But if the lumber company, I don't know what you call them down here, if the lumber supply company, if all they bring you is plywood, can you build this place? Not like this. You have the skills and you have the blueprints, the DNA. Body's already programmed to do its thing. But what don't you have? the raw materials that the body happens to require to do that with. Like any machine, the body runs best when operating according to its design principles. This is not about opinion. It's not about, well, I think you need to. Forget the need to. What does the body require in order for it to do what it is programmed to do? Because it was doing it long before we could spell any of this stuff. And it was working really well long before we had any idea about a lot of this stuff. But the point being, while the body's requirements haven't particularly changed, has the food supply changed? And that's exactly what we're talking about. The food supply has changed. Have you noticed that the environment's a little more hazardous, especially if you're downwind from Japan at the moment? <laughs> and not being ugly, I mean, it just, it happened. But it will make a difference. And so, importantly, we have to recognize that while we have access to maybe more food in one sense of the situation, one sense of it, that the body's requirements and what the food is supplying may not always be giving us exactly what we'd like to be having there. Now, this whole thing about wellness is it's about the body and what it's programmed to do. And with 60 trillion cells, those cells every day have to be maintained and regulated and protected. They're doing all this stuff. But very importantly, 150 to 500 billion new cells are being built every single day. A lot of other ones are being repaired. Just like with the carpenter example, it's going to build it, but if it doesn't have all the raw materials it needs, the nutrients it requires, how well is it going to build it? So you can manufacture a cell, but if you don't have all the stuff you need to make it work properly, it may not only function partly, it may not function at all. It may function in a very bad way too. And so it becomes important that we recognize there's two sides to this equation. Integrative medicine has given us a really great model that we can work with now because as we see what they're saying here, National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine and National Institutes of Health. Uh, National Institutes of Health in the U.S. is the huge oversight organization. 
every specialty, every everything in medicine kind of gets funded through them as far as research and that goes. They have a division called uh, this complementary, National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, and this is what they say. Integrative medicine combines mainstream medical therapies in CAM or complementary alternative medicine therapies for which there is some high quality scientific evidence of safety and effectiveness. Now, remember one thing that's real important because a lot of the advertising when it comes to nutritional supplements is, well, it's all this and it's all that and it's wonderful and especially, and it's natural. Arsenic is natural. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's efficacious for you, okay? And so the high quality scientific evidence is something that we really do need to look at. We don't want to be doing something just because somebody says you need to do something. The body has certain requirements. Let's fill them and then work at it from there. Now that was the U.S., but you guys aren't in the U.S., so we'll look at the Australasian Integrative Medicine Association. They came up with a very similar thing. The practice of medicine that reaffirms the importance of the relationship between practitioner and patient focuses on the whole person, is informed by evidence, and makes use of all appropriate therapeutic approaches, healthcare professionals, and disciplines to achieve optimal health and healing. Folks, I can tell you that while each one of us doctors with our own particular specialty areas think we're it, healthcare should be a team sport. The idea is ultimate best benefit for the patient. Now, if that takes a little of what I do and half a dozen other people do and certain nutritional supplements and whatever else is whatever else it takes. But it shouldn't be about I'm the doctor, you sick me fix, and you just listen to me and don't do anything else. You know, we have to recognize healthy so that we recognize unhealthy, but by and large, everything we do is about you sick me fix. And we have made it that way, and the pharmaceutical industry has been great for us in the states at advertising to the tune of $157.5 million per day telling you, the public, as well as us, the doctors, which drugs are the ones that you want today. You know, and it's always about the, no matter what you are and what you have, you take the drug and then there are people out in the park and they're jumping and running and playing and, you know, everything is wonderful. And then they spend about five minutes telling you all the things that could go wrong. <laughs> like, and oh, by the way, if uh, you have this, this, or this, tell your doctor because your left kidney will fall off if you take this drug, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. So, <clears throat> but here's the deal. U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and I can't remember, what's the name of the equivalent here? FDA. Okay. Every country has their own organization that way. Each country gets to decide what is going to be used as a claim and what isn't. And in this case, drug terminology can utilize, diagnose, cure, treat, mitigate, or prevent disease. That is words you use around a drug. Nutrition, particularly nutrition supplements on the other hand, can only be claimed to support normal structure and function. Structure and function. Well, you know, in a way I don't disagree with that. Because literally nutrition, if we think about it, is what does the body need to do what it's supposed to be doing in the first place? We give the body the raw materials, it does its thing, and everything is you know, good from that standpoint. And while on one end of it I can argue all day long as far as when we look at various medical studies and this, that, and the other thing that, well, maybe some of these words could apply, that's not the way the regulations apply. And no matter how much I like to drive 75 if the speed limit is 50, I can drive 75, but I'm at risk for getting into trouble. And so I want to really emphasize tonight the difference of what we're going to be talking about. Because part of the challenge is, one, I was trained in the model, but two is that people, have you noticed that not everybody is totally healthy? That there's a few people that have some health challenges. Do they like to mention those health challenges? Are they talking to you because they still have some of those health challenges? But see, here's the difference of what we're going to do. That beautiful model called integrative medicine has one half of the equation of what doctors do. They manage disease, because that is what we are specialists at. But on the other side, wellness, quality of life, has a whole lot to do with how the body is doing its thing. We're on the wellness side of this equation. 
Now, it doesn't mean that the doctors, we don't need them anymore. That's not what we're saying at all. We're just saying the best of both worlds is everything that modern medical science has to offer, but then how do we optimize the body's innate ability to do its thing? And so as we add that into the thing, always remember that supporting normal structure and function, if something is going wrong in the body, you give the body something that was missing that allowed it to get into trouble, if it gets itself out of trouble, that's just what the body did. It doesn't mean that we use something to cure or treat a specific disease name. Because in effect, nutrition doesn't do that. You just supply the body with what it needs and then does whatever it's going to do. Homeostasis is kind of the model that we work around here because that is exactly what the body's always trying to do is maintain homeostasis, kind of an even keel. If I run real hard, then my heart rate goes up. As Soon as I stop, my body immediately starts bringing it back down to normal levels. My body temperature goes up, I start sweating, different things the body tries to maintain normal in a whole lot of different areas. And so what we're doing and what we're talking about, particularly with targeted nutrition, is certain parts of the body that just have different nutritional requirements that we can help to achieve what they're doing. Now here's something that's hard for doctors to really fathom. Well, not to fathom, but to admit to. The body does not care. The body doesn't care that I went to school for a whole lot of years and learned a whole lot of fancy names. It just flat doesn't care how, why, where, what, when something goes wrong. It just has to deal with it. So homeostasis means it's trying to return it to normal. If you're invaded by a virus or a bacteria, the body's trying to neutralize or kill it. That's what it does. That's normal. If I can supply it with nutrients that specifically help the immune system, for instance, do that better, well, that's just me supplying the body with what it needs to make it work better. If it's damaged, it has to clean up the debris and initiate repair. <clears throat> but this is really one of the areas that we are going to look at tonight. All of the different systems in your body have a whole lot of different types of functions that they do. But extremely importantly is that if it would do a certain thing too long, that becomes a problem. So the body has various ways that it regulates itself as far as turning on the immune system, win the battle, and then go back home. Don't keep on fighting the war. It has to regulate itself properly, that just being one example. We all require the same nutrient categories. Anybody think they can do without vitamin C? If you really do, then we can arrange that to take it out of your diet and we'll see how you make out. You know, we don't get to choose which nutrients the body needs, but there are some other issues. And this is where in the past sometimes if I was doing something and I had a really incredible response to my body happened to respond wonderfully. Well, the mere fact that my body was able to do that can create unrealistic expectations if 10 other people with a similar situation, I tell them how wonderful I did, and so they do the same thing I did, but they, do you think they're all 10 going to get the same results I did? Not hardly. And so creating unrealistic expectations is something we don't want to do, and it turns out that we each, while we all require the same nutrients, Unfortunately, we have unique genetic profiles. Well, not unfortunately, because you might all look like me, and would that be not good? <laughs> Your unique biochemistry variations, nutrient cofactor availability, digestion, absorption, assimilation capability, and a whole lot of things. You know, just the mere fact we start getting older, the body becomes less efficient at doing certain things. Now, we're going to look at a product called Mana C. And what would you think that a product called Mana C does? Or at least has in it? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Well, that's a pretty good, pretty good response. But you know, this is kind of a special thing. And unfortunately, the way that we're allowed to describe stuff and claims that are made about it, we look at these statements for vitamin C supplementation, okay, aids, assists, or helps in the maintenance of general well-being. Isn't that a wonderful statement? <laughs> Well-being truly is much more than what it sounds like right here because it means total health, 
physical, financial, all kinds of wonderful things going on. But if somebody comes up and says, I've got a bottle that will help you have better well-being, <laughs> that doesn't just have the marketing ring to it, you know? But yet, it means some pretty remarkable things. May support a healthy immune system. Well, that's kind of important, but what does that mean? If I'm not sick at the moment, do I feel like I have an unhealthy immune system? And so, a bit of the challenge here is this is like me saying, please tell me all about Australia in four sentences. Can you do that? Not hardly. And so what we want to talk about a bit tonight is look at the body, what it's doing, what it happens to require, and how when we give it something like this, how does it make a difference? What's special about this that you would be interested in having it? There must be a sense of need before your message is of any use. I can go on for a long time talking about the components that are the ingredients that are in this product. But if you don't feel there's a sense of need about that, me just dumping a whole lot of academic science on you doesn't have much of an effect. So what we want to do is let you see what is this actually doing when you're sticking it in your mouth and your body starts doing its thing, when it's supporting that normal structure and function, what does that mean for you? How could that possibly be of benefit? So what does it mean if we say something will support or aid, maintain or assist, whatever? Maintenance of well-being, healthy immune system, nasal and sinus health. What in the world is that? You know, does my nose feel sick? <laughs> but yet, we're going to see it means a whole bunch. Supports the body's natural ability to regulate histamine. Now here's the difference in what we're talking about. It is critically essential, as you're going to see in a minute, to do exactly that for one, to help regulate histamine properly. What does that mean? Is it an antihistamine? No, because it can work either direction. These things modulate, in this case, the immune system. Depending upon what's going wrong, if the body has to aggressively defend itself, it helps perk it up and make it do that better. If it's over-responding, it can help tone it back down. So modulate isn't just stimulate, it's whatever the body needs to do to do that proper regulation, that's what we're talking about. So let's take a peek here. What's this? Well, if you look up here, it says a mast cell. What are these kind of funny looking purple things? Actually, those are salmonella bacteria. Mast cells happen to be part of the immune system. But they're a very key part of the immune system, and they're one that when they're not being regulated properly, they can cause a lot of misery. You know, some people in the fall of the year or in the spring of the year when certain trees and plants and things are getting ready to uh, start growing again, and they have all kinds of issues going on. You know, mast cells are designed to protect you in some different ways. But if they're over-responsive, if they overreact, it's a little bit like I've got a smoke detector in the bedroom and I light it, or rather in the kitchen, and I go back in the bedroom in the back of the house and I strike a match and the doggone alarm goes off in the kitchen. Now, would you say that's set a little bit too sensitive? And that's not a good thing, it's a false alarm. Well, when mast cells set off an alarm, they're activating various components of the immune system. And how they activate that can be a good thing or could be a not so good thing. It's therefore important that for particularly a lot of different individuals in general, but for a lot of individuals, having better regulation of how these mast cells do their things would be important because they mediate inflammatory responses in the respiratory tract, meaning sinuses and nasal passages and like that, digestive system, urinary, and skin. These guys are parked immediately underneath the skin, immediately underneath all these mucous membrane linings in those different areas. Their job is to look for viruses and bacteria, for foreign proteins and things coming in that could be an enemy to the body. The challenge is sometimes they think everything's an enemy and they are overreacting. But normal is not to be doing that. So supplying the body with specific nutrients like this manna C helps the body do exactly what it's supposed to do. It's on guard against viruses and bacteria. These are the guys that yell for help. 
There's scouts out there, as soon as they see something bad, then they start shouting chemical signal-wise and activating the immune system to do various protective things. Now here's how it kind of looks. This is the skin. Immediately under the surface of the skin, you've got all these mast cells. They stain these funny colors if you were actually doing a blood stain here. But because they're very close to the blood vessels, if they become activated, they release chemical signals that go to the bloodstream itself, or actually to the capillary, and then they're going to pull out various defense cells into the area to help defend you and to protect you. But sometimes they can get carried away with what they're doing. The body uses certain nutrients to help regulate that properly. Manasee also provides an herbal blend including lemon verbena, sage, peppermint, and other herbs. And it's really interesting because the research is showing that when you combine certain herbs together, they have a synergistic effect much more powerful than the individual ones would have. One of the interesting things was they looked at antioxidants and exercise. And they found, and some of this will be sounding a little bit technical here, forgive me for that, but I want to impress upon you that supporting the immune system means a heck of a lot more than those three words. Supporting the immune system, those four words, okay? What's actually going on, if you exercise a lot, you're having to do what? I mean, you're producing a lot of energy, right? In order to do the exercise. But when you make a lot of energy going on, you're converting fuel and oxygen together and you're creating free radicals. And the free radicals actually cause a lot of damage. And yet the exercise is good for you. So the body adapts to that exercise that's going on because of the free radicals, but if there's too much, it creates muscle injury and a whole host of things. So what they found, for instance, in athletes, uh, in anybody that's exercising, that if you take mana C and these particular herbal combinations specifically help crank up the body's glutathione. Anybody heard about glutathione, the major antioxidant protection in the cells on the body. It helps activate that to protect the neutrophils, the lymphocytes, various parts of the bloodstream, as well as to inhabit the, the caspase 3, which means that would be destroying cells. Usually it's a damaged cell or something, but some cells can be repaired. If you have too much of this, then they get killed anyway. You don't want to do that. So the body in this case, by simply giving it mana C, particularly looking at the nasal and sinus health, because those membranes and all that stuff's got to work properly. That mast cell has to be producing enough histamine, not too much histamine, regulating it properly. So this ends up being a tremendous product to do that targeted especially for individuals that might have some trouble in those areas. Immunostart is another one. In fact, I was sucking on one of these just a little bit ago. It's amazing what setting in airports in planes for about 40 hours can do for your throat and other parts of the body. And this is helping out. Works to stimulate and support the body's natural immune response. Well, again, okay, that's nice, but I don't think I'm sick anyway. So, by the way, does anybody think they're 100% healthy? You know, they're not sick at all? We can absolutely, yeah, you're right. We, we can check that out for you. We, it's called an autopsy. <laughs> and if you're totally convinced that you're okay, then we can prove it for you. <laughs> you know? Works to stimulate and support the body's natural immune system. <clears throat> First collection colostrum contains the active ingredients lactoferrin, immunoglobulin G, aids or assists in the maintenance of general well-being. You notice that well-being seems to be something that they think you've got to talk about. Supports a healthy immune system. Again, what does that mean? Beta-glucans. Ever hear of mushrooms? And that mushrooms have benefit from a lot of different things? The reason they have the benefit happens to be the beta-glucans that are in the mushrooms. It's a special type of, uh, in effect, a carbohydrate molecule. And citrus pectins. Now here's something you might not have thought about because we're talking about staying healthy. Well, as an athlete, you know, you think is healthy. I mean, obviously they, they're supposed to be eating right and doing all this good stuff. And yet the mere fact they train as intensively as they do dramatically can suppress the immune system. And one of the big challenges for elite athletes is staying healthy 
long enough to get through the training and actually do the competition. And many times they are getting sick or the immune system isn't supporting them. This can be a tremendous issue because as you're training that hard, you're creating a whole host of things going on in the body that actually is damaging it. And so what they have found is that this bovine colostrum, they call it the first milk, except that's not really it. In the first six hours after a calf is born, the mother cow's milk has an incredible array of really good things in it. And lactoferrin, the immunoglobulin Gs, but it's only the factors like that from the immune system that are there. Now later on, it's diluted as it was with milk, well, the actual milk with, uh, from the cow. But Manitech only uses the first six hours of this stuff. Now that wasn't specifically what they're using here, but what they're looking at is the simple fact that if in a highly trained athlete it's doing good things like that, even if you're not a highly trained athlete, it's still what is the benefit for your body? And it turns out just an incredible array of things. They are way beyond what we need to be talking about here, that would be more doctor level stuff, but I can assure you it's good for you. Now immunoglobulins, that's something that we can think about because everybody's heard of antibodies and their job is to protect you from a lot of things. They happen to be a glycoprotein molecule. Dr. Nugent talked about glyconutrients and how those particular special building block sugars are attached to proteins. And they, because they're attached and the things that they do, they're in all the body fluids. They're the most common one. 75 to 80% of all the immunoglobulins happen to be these G kind. They're important in protecting against pathogens. They have an incredible way that they stimulate the immune system to bring in all the other warriors, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines kind of a thing, to keep you protected. So would you say that protecting against pathogens, what's a pathogen? Virus, bacteria, yeast, toxin, parasites, those kind of things. That works out incredibly well. But here was one that's really interesting. Part of that is lactoferrin. Part of what's in this particular immunostart, uh, the immunostart it's called, and that specifically is to fine tune the immune system response. Now because these proteins, ferrin meaning iron, they transport iron into the cells of higher organisms. They act as an iron carrier, but only about 30% of the iron sites in the plasma molecule are occupied. The rest serve as iron scavengers. This is critically important because one, you don't want to build up of iron in the body, and two, bacteria, cancer cells, things that can harm you if they can be deprived of that iron because they're picking this up, that is hugely important. It keeps the concentration of free iron at a low value. It deprives it from bacteria, which interferes with their ability to continue to multiply and actually initiate infection in you. Now here's another thing that goes on. It's called a biofilm bomb shelter for bacteria. Did you know bacteria had bomb shelters? They're really effective ones because they will block the ability of your own immune system to attack and destroy the bacteria as well as they will, are resistant to antibiotics. And so we see bacteria where the antibiotics can't get to them to kill them because they're surrounded by the special bomb shelter. And it's a substance that is produced in response to these guys gathering together. So they get involved with a whole bunch of them in one area, it can create chronic infections. Now the body has a very difficult time trying to deal with that, so do the doctors. But the body has a backup plan, and here's what it is. This lactoferrin, and by the way, what we're looking at here, I used this description earlier, ever seen in a stream a rock that had a bunch of algae growing around it? You know, kind of, if you step on it, you're sliding out. It's literally slime kind of a thing. Well, that's literally a slime layer. But those doggone things get slime layers and certain types of bacteria love to create this kind of a deal. Well, the body is supposed to be defending you against it, and while the body has defense cells that could get to it and kill it, they have to be able to get to it. That's the challenge. So like in the middle ear sometimes, when kids are constantly having that going on, if you've had any kind of joint replacement or something where you've got a you know, metal ball or whatever in there or stents in the heart, these biofilms have a tendency to want to grow around areas like that. 
and it's a real issue from a health standpoint. So how do we help the body do that? Well, it naturally uses this stuff called lactoferrin, and that happens to be what is in the uh, uh, Munistart, so it just gives us another additional source to make available to the body to do its thing. So on this side, we see where these guys have built their little slime uh, bomb shelter, and they're hiding in there, and they just keep on doing their thing. They're releasing toxins, they're doing lots of bad things. When the lactoferrin gets in the system, the body uses that to send false signals, in effect, into these bacteria and tell them, hey, there's not enough iron here. You better go start looking for the iron. And so instead of staying clumped together, hidden in a bomb shelter, able to continue to grow and cause you problems, they disperse and start scattering around. The body's able, when it does that, to actually then attack and destroy them because now they're available out here where in here they were in their bomb shelter. Pretty interesting how unique the body is and what it can do. Increases plasma levels of neutrophil precursors. Since neutrophils are an integral part of the immune system, like they're the first responders, that would probably be kind of an important thing. We're going to look at beta-glucans. So, well, the beta-glucans are from the mushroom. Citrus pectin is another thing that helps the body to kind of absorb certain things that you don't want in there. And so because it can bond to them, they just go right on out through the digestive system. Well, we've talked about a lot of things here, but let's go inside the body for a minute and see what that kind of means because we just talked about these neutrophils and how we enhance the precursors with them. So let me show you something on what the body itself does. These are bacteria. This is one of the neutrophils running around, chasing after it. This is the you can run but you can't hide scene. Okay. Now the reason that was able to do that, partly when we're some, using something like Immunostart, it actually helps make more of those even available to be built to be able to do this thing in the first place. But ultimately, in, able to, or in order to be able to recognize good guys versus bad guys, because you don't want the body uh, defense system attacking you, you want it attacking the enemy. In order to do that, there's a thing called glyconutrients that Dr. Nugent had talked about before. They are a source of the specific, what are called special building block or non-metabolic sugars that are built into antenna-like structures that stick off the cell. They're what allow it to go in and say, okay, that's me, that's me, that's me, you know, it's traveling all through the body, and so it doesn't attack. But all of a sudden it goes, ooh, that is not me, now it attacks. So the difference is the body's ability to do that. Okay, he's chasing it, trying to escape, and he takes off. And not quite. Snagged. This is your defense system in action. This is what really is going on inside your body. Now, would you say that probably your body's ability to defend against cancer cells would be a good thing? You know, I've seen different estimates of anywhere from 400 to 10,000 cancer cells are forming in your body every single day. So it might be good that your neutrophils here are able to recognize, in this case, a cervical cancer cell, and they literally attack and destroy it. They are locking onto it. They are injecting free radicals, the same ones that you take antioxidants to protect you against, your defense cells use to kill cervical cancer cells. Well, all kinds of cancer cells as far as that goes. But notice how when they lock on, by the time they're done, incredible things have occurred. Well, it's gonna, we'll watch that again. Notice how they surround it. They're recognizing it because of a sugar antenna that says this is not part of my pattern. They come down after this one next. Notice how it just kind of blew it up. Now they're going after this one. And they'll keep on. Now the deal here with these particular neutrophils, it's a suicide attack. 
they die in the process. Their lifespan is anywhere from 10 hours to 72 hours. 10 to 72 hours, and then they're being built new. And so do you think it would be a good idea that the body has what it needs in order to manufacture those properly, A, eh? since every day your body is building 150 to 500 billion new cells. Remember we said part of the deal is it's going to make something. Now it may not be something that can do the job completely if it doesn't have all the parts. That's why we want to make sure that it has the parts that it needs. Okay, bounce back. This has been a really interesting product because it was in effect designed a bit for the over 40 crowd and people that you know were not quite used to doing the exercise and the workout in the yard and all those kind of things and we go out and have a glorious weekend and then can't move on Monday kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, but it's actually far more than even that. It's a natural proprietary blend of proteolytic enzymes and phytosterols that when taken daily over time helps reduce soreness and stiffness due to overexertion or physical activity. Now what in the tarnation does that mean? Well, it has a number of uh, proteolytic enzymes, protease, bromelain, that helps break down the tissue damage that has occurred and cleans it out because you've got to get rid of the debris before the body can repair anything. Now an athlete that's doing an intense workout, they may be lifting weights or whatever they're doing, but the idea is you strain and actually tear muscle fibers in order to have, as it repairs itself, to bulk up and build a bigger muscle cell out of the thing. Well, whether we're trying to do that or not, when you go out and do things on the weekend, or, you know, the body can have damage from a lot of different directions. Anybody sprained their ankle, been in an auto accident? You know, the body doesn't care how the damage occurs, it just has to help repair it. May help reduce bruising, swelling, and inflammation from minor injuries. May help in the recovery from overexertion or physical activity. Aid, assist, or help in the maintenance of good health or general well-being. There's our well-being again. But this is really neat. Swelling, inflammation from minor injuries. Well, this is, like I said, it could be an athletic endeavor. It could be something as simple as moving the piano to a different location. You know, the wife gets it in her head that you got to move the thing. But what we're looking at with this is some real interesting stuff. What does that mean? A lot of research going on with these two things in combination, individually, but especially in combination. Chondroprotective. What's chondroprotective mean? Chondro? Cartilage? You know, one of the interesting things that occurs is if you damage cartilage, it doesn't have a good blood supply, so it's difficult for the body to repair that, but it is building, or it does have the capacity to build new, or to yeah, build new cartilage cells, bottom line. But the problem is, if there's inflammation going on, it directly blocks the ability to build new cartilage cells, but it allows the body to break down the damaged cartilage cells. Unfortunately, that means you end up, as if you keep on taking away the damaged cartilage cells and you're not ever repairing and replacing, kind of like bone density, you're building up and tearing down, and if the tearing down goes faster than the building up, the body's in trouble. The body has its own mechanisms to help counteract that. As it turns out, one of the reasons it was kind of nominated for the over 40 crowd is because have you noticed that when you're over 40, you don't recover quite as quick as you used to when you were younger? And one of the reasons is simply that when we put something like this in, it modulates. Now, aren't those fancy looking terms? You know, the beauty here is that whether you can spell them, whether you understand them, as long as you open mouth and swallow and put something in the body that it happens to require to take care of these kind of things, it just does its own thing. It doesn't need your knowledge in order to make that happen. It needs you to open mouth and swallow, but beyond that, you don't have to worry about it. But from our doctor perspective and part of what we teach in the seminars with the doctors, these happen to be involved as chemical signaling processes to do a whole lot of bad things, particularly in a joint location. Now, if you can give the body something that it uses to modulate, to modify that, that's a good thing. But see, here's the difference. If I give you a drug as an anti-inflammatory, it kind of shuts down everything and it can't be selective in the part that it's working on. 
But if we're using something that the body was designed to be able to incorporate, it has the ability to sometimes turn these on if it needs more defense. But if it doesn't need more defense and needs to regulate that whole inflammatory cascade process better, now we've given it what it needs to be able to do that as well. And so suddenly we have a product that doesn't have side effects like the typical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory disease or uh, the uh, pills would have. But in this case, we're not saying it's an anti-inflammatory. It just supplies the body with what it needs to modulate or regulate that whole inflammatory thing better. Now that also means that if you've done that, not only are you slowing down the damage, and here again, this caspase 3 and I apoptosis, this is cell suicide. This is something that initiates cell suicide because the body's designed, if something gets in trouble, if a cell gets in trouble, then the body has two choices, fix it or destroy it. If it can't be fixed, it destroys it. But if you have too much of these signals, then you're killing off stuff that could have been repaired. You're killing off good stuff as well. So again, modulation, regulating these different systems is critically important. This helps us to do that, and it also activates chondrocyte differentiation in survival. What in the tarnation does that mean? It means that you have mesenchymal stem cells that are in the immediate layer of where damage is occurring, and if you can cause them to differentiate into a cartilage cell instead of a stem cell, and it is growing cartilage, that's going to be a good thing. If it helps them to survive and resist this kind of thing, that's a very good thing. So the body always had the design to fix things. Damage, fix, prevent, you know, whatever it's trying to do, it has the capability. It, however, has to have certain key components in order to allow that to work right. Now, we won't get into it tonight, but one of the major things that we could be discussing is when you're using part of that uh, group of five, the, uh, the key, uh, what we call the core five products, the essential fatty acids, the uh, amyrtose itself, the glyconutrients, also are helping to supply the body from a number of different directions the ability to help regulate this inflammatory process that goes on. They aren't anti-inflammatories, but they're part of what the body uses for normal regulation. If you don't have too much ins or inflammation in the joint area where damage has occurred, it cleans up the debris, but it also can rebuild and repair. If you have too much inflammation, it continues to strip away the dead or damaged cells, but you never repair anything, you never replace anything. So what we're talking about is a natural way the body was designed to work in the first place, but if it doesn't get what it needs, it's in trouble. In this case, they actually did some clinical studies and they looked at both pain and energy expenditure. And the hoot was that even in the older folk, they were actually in the process of doing the work or the athletic activity or whatever they were doing, their body was actually producing and burning more energy, more calories, and that means you can work out harder and longer or rake the yard longer or whatever you want to call it, but then within 48 hours, you know how it's always the day after, that, not the day after, but the day after that one, that you really get stiff and sore and all of that? It helped to reduce that really dramatically. So net result is, if we look at that muscle soreness and the irritation and all those kind of things, it's really good for all of that. But just saying you don't have as much muscle soreness, do you understand now that there's a whole lot of things really, really beneficial going on inside that body of yours when we come at it from this direction. If we just use something that will cover up and block the pain or that is a total anti-inflammatory, it doesn't have the capacity to do the rebuilding, repairing. It may take away inflammation, and that's an okay thing. But again, one of the challenges that we doctors face is that when we use the medication that we use, while it can control symptoms, manage disease entities, it certainly isn't a nutrient that the body is missing. It's not supplying any of that stuff. And so I'm not saying that we don't benefit from medication. I'm simply saying that managing a disease state but then optimizing the body's innate ability to do repair stuff is a pretty good idea. That's where we get best patient result. 
Because it isn't just about making you not feel it. It's about how do we help the body do as good a job as it possibly can. So when we look at these bounce back capsules, yes, you do take them uh, about 45 minutes before a meal or two hours after a meal. We mention this specifically because the proteolytic enzymes, if you eat it with a meal, well, there's going to be protein in the meal that you're eating. And so you're actually wasting some of the enzymes because they're, since there's protein right there, they would be using some of the proteolytic enzymes digesting the protein in your belly. That's not their job. They're supposed to be getting out into circulation, cleaning up the debris and the damage out around in the body. Now this is one of those things that I really thought, well, gosh, that sounds great. And then I started doing some study on this thing. And I literally have about this thick of page after page after page I've pulled out of the medical literature. In fact, I've got it in my briefcase, not here, but actually back at the hotel. But this thing called GI ProBalance, prebiotic, probiotic, it's called a symbiotic when you put the two together. Everybody, I think, has heard of probiotics, the friendly bacteria in the gut. It's a good idea, isn't it? But here again, if we talk about, you know, helps support digestive function, digestive system, if you don't particularly have any digestive things going on that you're aware of, does it really, does it sound like you need that? And realistically, well, if I don't think I need it, then I probably won't buy it. Well, this isn't about trying to sell you something. What I'm going to go over in just a teeny little bit of a four-hour course is simply some incredible information because this is a huge area in medical research right now. For about the last four to six years, they've been doing extensive research because what goes on in your gut is so dynamically affecting the rest of the body. We're going to see some of that. In this case, it's a probiotic blend of six particular bacteria. One of the important things with this thing called ambrotose, which is what's now a glyconutrient, or we call it a glyconutrient, it's a category of nutrients that didn't even exist before 96, 1996, as far as our recognition that not only is it something the body happens to require, but some of those could be missing or deficient in the diet, so coming up with a supplement was going to be a very good idea. The pharmaceutical industry, particularly with these special saccharides, these what they call non-metabolic bioactive sugars, have been spending billions of dollars trying to develop a whole array of drugs virtually for every disease category based on the simple fact that the body utilizes those in some very special ways. Now that doesn't mean that we're using this to treat like what they're talking about because they will make a drug that would have some very special characteristics using those particular saccharides. Having said that, the body requires them for a lot of different things. Now the challenge though is that to get these into the body, your body doesn't digest certain types of carbohydrate. And so that means that it would go straight through as roughage or fiber. But the friendly bacteria in your gut literally break those apart into, instead of a very complex molecule, simple parts of the molecule, a monosaccharide, a single sugar, which can be utilized very nicely, absorbed into the bloodstream, carried throughout the body, does all kinds of wonderful things. But it also helps to feed the friendly bacteria. Now on the flip side of that, pathogenic or bad bacteria in the gut can't utilize it. It doesn't use it as fuel. The thing is, in your gut, you've got anywhere from 10 to 100 trillion bacteria. There's a war going on constantly. You've got the good guys and the bad guys. And if the good guys are winning, you're in good shape. If the bad guys are winning, then you're not in such good shape. And you're not in such good shape in ways that you will never feel, but yet can have pretty dramatic results. So let's take a peek at what that means. Proper function of the immune system, proper digestion and absorption of nutrients. Uh, true, but kind of doesn't give you a lot of description. Remember we said 70% of the immune system is located in your digestive tract. Literally, when the gut is healthy, it keeps your whole body healthy. Well, let's look at your gut here just a minute. We've got the small intestine wrapping around all over the place, and we have the large uh, intestine, or the colon, coming up here. And so we've got the ascending, transverse and descending colon, all of which, all these various parts have just an incredible amount of bacteria in it. 
know, it's ironic. I was reading an article just the other day, and what they were literally saying is because your skin is covered with bacteria, your gut is loaded with bacteria, only 10% of the actual cells that are in and on your body are you. The rest of it is bacteria. I thought, ew. <laughs> but at any rate, what we're going to look at, and this is the kind of the tricky part, because when we consider what's going on, do you just talk to people that are healthy all the time? Do people have health challenges? Do they like to talk about their health challenges? Do they ever talk to you about their health challenges? Do you have your own health challenges? And yet drugs cure, treat, mitigate, prevent disease, and nutrition simply supports normal structure and function. But realistically, within the realm, we understand doctors do their doctor thing and it's pathology. But there's actually new terminology that you need to be a bit aware of and some new concepts that you need to be aware of because yes, the doctor does one thing, but we also, from a wellness perspective, need to support the body in a different direction. Microobesity, new term, literally the type of bacteria you have in your gut that is more dominant can help you gain weight. They not only can break down certain fibers that are ordinarily wouldn't be digestible, they break them down and now you've got a whole bunch of extra calories that your body has to deal with. They stimulate gene expression that turns on the fat storing mode, causes adipocytes to be converted into adipocytes, fat cells, and to store fat. Metaflammation is inflammation, low-grade inflammation, simply because you're overweight. And that low-grade inflammation creates an incredible array of bad things for the body. Now, does that mean if we give the body these things that help it get back to a more normal thing that we're treating metaflammation? No, it's not what it means. It simply means the body has certain requirements and we're going to try to help fulfill those. Dysbiosis, the microbiome, normobiosis, a lot of different terms. Metabolic endotoxemia. Anybody realize that you have cholera in your belly, in your intestines? How about salmonella, E. coli, staph, pseudomonas? You named the bug and it's probably in the gut. Now the only trick there is you A, have to have some of the bad bacteria around because it does certain things that are okay for you. But if you don't have predominance of the healthy bacteria, now you're in a world of hurt. And that's where this metabolic endotoxemia comes in. Because these gram-negative bacteria actually get out into that area where that 70% of your immune system is. They initiate signaling because of how they react with the immune system that causes low-grade inflammation, insulin insensitivity, diabetes, heart disease. Now you think having normal bacterial flora in the gut might be a real good idea. And it's literally just because of the bacteria. Now we're looking at some gut cells here, and these happen to be bacteria that are attached to the lining cells in your stomach. Enteric microbiota, the forgotten organ. Microbiota is the term for all the different kinds of bacteria. Critical role in generating a variety of functions which sustain health. Now, if it's critical to sustain health, can you imagine that if you alter the flora that is dominant, that it might actually lead to disease if it's disrupted? So does that mean we're treating or preventing disease? No, it means your body's designed to work a certain way and we're trying to help it do that by making sure it's getting what it needs. Talks to the immune system, in particular to the gut associated, associated lymphoid system, which is 70% in there. But this is also really important. Heavily involved in the maturation and proliferation of human intestinal cells, lifespan three to seven days. So every three to seven days, you've got new gut lining cells. Why do people, if they happen to be taking chemotherapy, often get all the vomiting and diarrhea and all the bad stuff like that? Because unfortunately, the chemo is designed to kill rapidly growing cells, which happen to be cancer cells, but also happens to be gut lining cells. So when you kill those and they're being sloughed off all the time, then voila, you're having the, everything from diarrhea to the vomiting and you, know, you feel horrible. Now that doesn't begin mean that we're treating that. I'm just telling you, these guys grow fast, but they have to be healthy while they're doing that fast growing. Normal biosis simply means that you've got the right kind of the health benefiting ones in there. 
They are predominant. In dysbiosis, it's when one or a few potentially harmful microorganisms are dominant, thus creating a disease-prone state. This is probably the best descriptive of what we're talking about. You can be at risk for certain things. Just because you have a gene mutation, you can be at risk to develop certain things. Well, if you do some things, then nutritionally, that helps your body resist or to neutralize that particular risk factor. It didn't mean you treated something you didn't have yet, but it allows your body to be more normal in how it's able to respond. And so what we're looking at here is it's not saying that, hey, we're going to treat your whatever disease, you know, inflammatory bowel disease, it's just that the more normal the gut is, the better off you're going to be, period. We look at this picture and notice that these are individual cells, so you've got a single layer or lining of cells. They have these spaces in between where the cells bump up against each other. We notice over here a lot of different types of bacteria. This is a good thing. It's okay to have pathogenic bacteria in the intestines because right through here is where 70% of your immune system is setting. Obviously, a lot of bad things can come in from the food that you eat and whatever else, and so it's important to have protection right here. So a few, a small percentage of the bad bacteria are enough to tweak the immune system and keep it kind of ready to go in case that the, there would be an overpopulation of the bad bacteria. But tweaking it is all you want to do. At the same time, if bad bacteria take over, then they cause an interruption in this barrier, in effect, that is here. And so they get through, and as more bad bacteria get out here, it creates a whole inflammatory cascade, a whole series of events, one of which is chemical signaling that stimulates gene expression to make you gain weight. Now, I'm not saying that all the people that are overweight and have been on all kinds of diets, that their only issue is they just don't have the right bacteria in their gut. But part of the scenario in an overall wellness of the body is let's look at the things that we can help out, and that certainly is one of them. Gut barrier function, which we just talked about, vital for maintenance of gut health. Ever hear of a leaky gut, leaky gut syndrome? You know, and the problem back here is that, whoops, if these things, if you don't maintain the health of these cells, which the good bacteria actually do that, they're releasing chemical signals that help keep them healthy, you get a deterioration both in the absorptive capacity to get nutrients out of the food that you're eating, but at the same time, it starts to open up the spaces between the cells as they deteriorate and break down. Now larger size protein molecules are coming out of the gut before they're all broken down as tiny as they're supposed to be, and any time you get larger pieces of protein out here, the body is sensing that as an enemy. Ever hear of allergies and things like that? You know, it's sensing like there's a problem when there actually isn't a problem. But as these bacteria come out, they happen to have, and don't worry about remembering this, the wall, the membrane lining of the bacteria, of gram-negative bacteria, is a lipopolysaccharide that specifically stimulates a pretty intense immune response and creates a lot of inflammation, only because the wrong bacteria are predominant. And since the body is reacting to that, that low-grade inflammation that's going on creates problems with insulin sensitivity, leads to and helps contribute to diabetes. Now there's a lot of people, and how many times has the doctor ever talked to you, it's always about if it's a diabetic thing, well, let's control your blood sugar. So we're using insulin and or an oral diabetic med. We're trying to get you to be careful with your diet. Now, part of the challenge, though, is that anytime you have something off in the system, well, gosh, have you ever noticed that wound healing doesn't occur quite as well in those folks? Ever noticed that they, you know, the immune system isn't working as good as it ought to be? Have you ever heard of anybody that was diabetic that didn't eventually develop complications? They always do even though we're trying our best to manage things. But see, if we would take the uh, you know, kind of the idea, you know, the body needs to have a normal antioxidant system. It needs to have normal re tissue repair. It needs to have normal immune system. How do we support that? 
we give the body what it requires to do all of those kind of things. If it requires having healthy gut bacteria so they are not causing insulin resistance, which can lead to having to take even more medication and stuff, we're not treating diabetes. We're simply trying to help restore homeostasis, getting back to working the way it's designed to. So with this gut barrier function, interestingly enough, as we've gotten better with hygiene, people used to die mainly due to infectious diseases. We've eliminated infectious diseases, but the constant scrubbing of your hands and all the cleaning that we do and all that sort of a thing, actually you're not getting the inoculation of certain of these bacteria that are kind of beneficial. And so we've kind of artificially with our hygiene created a scenario that has helped contribute to intestinal inflammatory diseases. Interesting thought. Probiotics and their effector molecules can influence the gut barrier, modulation of mucus production, the reduction of bacterial adhesion, enhancement of tight junctions, enhancement of cell survival, induction defenses of IgA. You, know, you don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff other than the fact there's a whole lot of really good things that happen when you take care of that gut. We give it these prebiotics which are special carbohydrates that actually fuel or feed those. Interestingly enough, as the bacteria break down these prebiotic sugar polysaccharides, they create what are called short chain fatty acids, which have an incredible beneficial effect on the gut health itself. They actually have part of the reaction of decreasing inflammation, because you've got certain chemical signals that cause inflammation, you've got ones that help to block inflammation. As long as you got it balanced out, everything is cool. If one becomes dominant, you're in trouble. You always want to have more of the healthy stuff. The mere fact that you're breaking down these special polysaccharides that are going in and producing this, and these guys actually are involved in vitamin production as well. So some of the nutrients that your body both requires and is getting is coming from the simple fact we've given it what it needed. Now, this is the medical approach to it. Obesity, type 2 diabetes, low-grade inflammation are becoming worldwide epidemics. This is not a, just a U.S., a Canadian, a Australian, or what have you kind of an issue. This is worldwide. Again, pharmaco-nutritional. This is medical terminology, medical kind of things. This Kenny, incredible guy, he just did a 70 or a three-day seminar on all this stuff up in Belgium. But at any rate, prebiotics and probiotics, a promising pharmaco-nutritional approach to reversing the host metabolic alterations linked to gut dysbiosis. In this case, this is medicine, medically trying to come up with some answers to something. What we're simply saying is, no, we're not doing it from a pharmaceutical standpoint. It just happens to be what the body needs. So let's give it what it can use to do whatever it's going to do. Microobesity, that's the microbes and obesity thing. There's a new one too called infect obesity, and that's where you can have an infection of a certain kind that then because of the way it happens to affect the body causes you to tremendously put on weight due to the infection itself. But interestingly enough, in the process of putting on the weight, it reduces pretty dramatically your heart disease risk because the all the fat is not going into the blood vessels, it's going into the body itself. Oh, and what I was just looking at here, this is simply the idea that certain bacteria cause pro-inflammatory chemicals to be released, some cause anti-inflammatory chemicals, as long as you've got a balance, regulated the way it's supposed to be, everything is cool. When you get it out of sync, and there's a whole lot of things, just stress alone damages good bacteria in the gut. There's a lot of different things that cause damage to good bacteria. So helping to replace them on a daily basis is a pretty good idea. This happens to be metaflammation, metabolic inflammatory state caused by just being overweight. We used to think fat cells were just storage kind of things, but it turns out they're incredibly active from an endocrine and a cell signaling aspect. They produce things like estrogen, but they're also producing a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines that initiate the inflammation, but literally the mere fact that you have all these fat cells producing these certain chemicals 
actually initiates another couple of systems in the gut that then stimulates the production of more fat. So fat is begetting fat, so to speak. It's really not just the idea that, golly, it's uh, not cosmetically nice or my clothes don't fit as good. This is hugely important to our overall health. That's kind of why I'm beating it to death a little bit here. The nice thing is that no matter how involved, and believe me, for three days that Dr. Canny was going over this kind of stuff down at the you know, microcellular degree, the solution is ultimately pretty simple. We support the body, we give it prebiotics and probiotics. Okay. This is what I was just talking about, the metabolic endotoxemia. We've kind of already been there, done that with these, so I'll just kind of brush by that. But this is literally certain kinds of good bacteria will stimulate a reaction by what are called dendritic cells. They are part of the intestinal immune system. They have all kinds of really nice protective mechanisms that they can do then because they're being stimulated. Whereas bad bacteria come in and stimulate in a bad way and have a very negative effect. Good bacteria, exactly that, good for the body. This was just looking at some of the different things, different ways and that's why I say it's real complex in the chemistry. It doesn't matter. It just means that these things control fat mass, meaning it makes you put on more fat. So it's better to have the healthy cell or the healthy gut bacteria in there. And let's, yeah, this was the one that I was just talking about. In obese people, when they compared them to lean individuals, they had fewer of this strain of bacteria, more of this strain. That increased the efficiency of the individuals with those to harvest energy from otherwise indigestible carbohydrates, favors fat accumulation, and favors the systemic exposure to the lipopolysaccharides of those gram-negative bacteria, which means more inflammation, which means more putting on fat. It's a vicious cycle. And part of what we want to do to help people is give them more options. And it's not about you're treating fat with friendly bacteria. You're not treating inflammation with friendly bacteria. Normal is normal is normal. We give the body what it needs to be normal. In this case, uh, a couple of the commercially available plant polysaccharide supplements that I use from a certain company, they actually had these independently tested and they found that one, it helped the good bacteria, two, especially the bifidobacteria, and three, it actually seemed to help enhance the guys that were not burning the, or creating the extra calories. These are really nice, you use one stick per day, now you can put it on cold foods or mix with drinks, it tastes really good, easy to use, great self life. So how do we share this kind of information with people because A, we don't cure, treat, mitigate disease, but yet people want to talk about their owies. And so here's a simple way of helping to do that. Remember, it's about high quality scientific evidence of safety and effectiveness. So how do I use this to share information with others? Well, we've already talked about doctor's job is the disease name thing. Our job is the wellness model. Unfortunately, since a lot of people are facing health challenges, it's still going to be the doctor does his part, we do our part. Got to be sense of need before your message is of any use. Remember, it's not about how much knowledge you have. I didn't show you all this stuff so you could go learn it like I happen to have learned it and you could go do all that stuff. I just wanted to impress upon you how truly important and there is a need, whether you feel it or not, that battle is going on all the time inside your body. So certain of these things are going to be incredibly beneficial from a supplement standpoint. But for the given individual, how much knowledge you have and how much over information you can overwhelm them with, the single most important concept, it's got to be about the person you're talking to. What is the need that they have? And when we get to that, there's three key questions that you ask. If they've got a health challenge, question number one, are you under a doctor's care? Because the doctor is doing the doctor part. We're not trying to be doctors. We're not trying to do the doctor's part. And this question isn't to say, are you under a doctor's care? Well, how's that working for you? Not doing too hot a job, is he, huh? <laughs> or she? It's not about that. It's simply, are they under <coughs> medical care? If they are, then the question is, are you getting the results you had hoped for? It's not that the doctor isn't doing his or her job well. 
It's not that we're saying, we've got a better answer. Forget that stuff, just use my stuff. That is absolutely not what we're saying. The point here is, are you getting the best results that you had hoped for? Are you having as good a quality of life as you possibly can? Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be the disease name that is bugging people. It's going to be what that disease name might have kept them from doing. It's about the quality of their life that they don't have. What would they like to be able to do? What's going on from the doctor's perspective? I mean, they're treating and managing things. Now, can I tell you that you can mess up your body bad enough that it is able to totally fix itself and that we doctors can't overcome it? That is certainly possible. But see, the point isn't that you have something you're stuck with. The point is, how good is all the other parts of the body working? That's what's going to really, truly determine the quality of your life. Now, if you can go out and run and jump and play in the park and the music is going great and all of that, that's wonderful. But especially important is going to be, are you getting the results you had hoped for? It doesn't mean the doctor did a bad job. It just means you didn't get the results that you hoped for. If they had, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place. They wouldn't have come across your path that way. So then it's about quality of life or lack of it. And then the third question, would you be open to hearing about an integrative healthcare approach that many leading healthcare professionals and medical schools are saying will achieve the best patient outcome? And this is the crux of the issue. It's all about the best outcome they can have. And so it's then a combination of two different things. Current medical standard of care was superior evidence-based nutritional supplementation. Here's a way that you can even begin that because in the past we've had a tendency to try to overwhelm people with all this information kind of stuff and they don't have a sense of need yet. But if you get talking to them and you get them talking about their issues, whether they, they can love their doctor, but there's darn few people that wake up in the morning just excited that they're going to be sick and they get to go see their doctor again. You know, I mean, it's just not happening that way. And so what we want to talk to them about is ask questions that allow them to express what isn't working. What aren't they doing as far as the results that they want to have? Hey, are they sleeping okay? They have lots of energy? Are they able to think and focus and concentrate all day long? Can they bend over and pick up the grandkid? You know, what is going on with their day? Because when they get tired of those kind of things, that's when their sense of need is there, and now they're ready to hear the information that you have to share. But a really important way to start sharing that is with a couple of uh, these short video interviews by Dr. Rob. One was with Dr. Ben Carson. Have you seen that one on the website? I mean, that thing is incredible. We're talking one of the top-rated doctors in the entire world a pediatric neurosurgeon at John Hopkins who's just done incredible things, written books, speaks all over the world, teaches brain surgery on kids. He's stating flat out that when he had his own issues, he did the doctor part of the equation, but when people heard that he had an issue, they sent information about everything you can think of. I mean, literally, because he is so well known. He looked at all of that stuff the only thing that made sense to him with his scenario was doing what the doctor said to do, but at the same time, he chose to use glyconutrient technology. Now, can I tell you that is huge when you have somebody with the brain power this man does and the influence that he does. And then looking out at uh, Dr. Guanari from Scripps Institute, who has helped to initiate a whole lot of the complementary medicine symposiums where they're teaching doctors all around the world and they have doctors from all around the world coming in and talking about that. So the idea is simply putting, giving these people, it's not just me saying it, it's not just you saying it, the top people in the world are doing that. Now in the U.S. over half the medical schools now are teaching complementary alternative medicine as part of their course curriculum because best patient outcome is the best of both worlds. So it allows you the chance to get that going from there. You know, from that point then, uh, one thing that I'd suggest, you get his new book, which I can't remember the name of it right now, but in the book, he flat out states of everything that was there, the only thing that he chose to do was Amber Toast. I mean, that is a phenomenal statement when you got a guy like him making that statement. I mean, there's people that they see the book and that's all, they don't even want to hear about anything else. It's, if it was good enough for him, it's certainly good enough for them. The other part of it 
everything from the product tear, tear sheets, uh, your mana pages, I mean, you have various ways of getting more information, but the bottom line is just the concept that there's more that can be done, there's more options. But the options are not just running down to the local health food store and grabbing something off the shelf. We're talking about evidence-based nutritional supplementation. And that's what Manatech has to offer because in just the last five years, they've spent 20 million on research and development. They have spent millions of dollars from the first day that they were in business practically, they've had their products being tested. They were willing to put their money literally where their claims were about their products. Any company that is willing to back up their products with a six month guarantee, satisfaction guarantee, you take the products for six months, if you're not happy, you get your money back, period. Full stop, end of story. That is inspiring to me. Now, on the flip side of that, <coughs> since myself and other doctors have written 21, 22 hours now of continuing medical education courses on the technology behind these products, I can assure you, and they've been in the US, you know, where I'm from, they are approved as category one, continuing medical education, which is the highest category that you can get in the United States for license renewal for MDs, DOs, DCs, dentists, nurses, pharmacologists, the whole gamut of healthcare professionals. And that simply means that for me as a doctor, when you say, hey, try it, it works, it's true that it does. When I say, hey, try it, it works, my license went on the line behind that statement. For me to make that because of a whole lot more legal liability in the US, there has to be a heck of a lot more scientific validity to it. And I can promise you that on this computer, there's probably about 20 gigs darn near of information just off of the stuff I've pulled off of the Medline and PubMed and all these different search engines kind of a thing. So we have a wonderful situation where you can feel confident and comfortable in sharing information with people. You can be passionate about it because the science is there. And whether you can ever describe it the way I have or not doesn't even matter. Because no matter how I describe it, no matter how much I do, and we go through all that training with the doctors, all we've done after all that time is explain how and why the body did what the body did. It has nothing to do with the doctor. It's about wellness. With everything that I've studied, it works just as good today as it did back on day one when I was asked to check this stuff out by the associate pastor at my church. I mean, I've been going to nutrition seminars with the best minds in the country, never heard of this kind of stuff. I get a phone call up and wants me to check this stuff out. I've been in practice 22 years. My clinical experience in all my education and training says, that is about the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. It hadn't, if it hadn't been that she was the associate pastor at the church, I probably wouldn't have even done it because it just was outside of uh, my way of looking at things. That is not the way I was educated. Certainly wasn't my clinical experience. But the changes that occurred when I got the product for that lady were so incredibly spectacular that I started this little mission, you might say, of studying about this stuff, not because I needed to to make it work. I mean, I couldn't even spell it yet, and it was working just fine. <laughs> but the issue was I was fascinated what happened because I was taught it can't. And believe me, I'd witnessed in a lot of patients that it couldn't do it that way. But see, the body wasn't educated that way. It hadn't read the same textbook I had. It didn't have the same instructor I did. <coughs> and so when it got what it needed to do, what it was programmed to do, it kind of just did it. And I can't begin to tell you how many people's lives as I've traveled around the world, and it has been thousands. Because as soon as I hit Singapore, that's 10 countries, and over 250 cities, and literally thousands of people's lives who have been changed radically, not by Dr. Dan, but by people exactly like you who simply shared some information that gave people more <coughs> options. And it gave them options not instead of proper medical care, but along with, because the best of both worlds is gonna be the answer. And that's what you have to offer people. All the stories that I heard, all the things that I could talk to you about had nothing to do with them going to their doctor. As a, for instance, how many of you are here today because your doctor said, this would be a great idea, go listen to Fouts? <laughs> I don't see too many hands up. 
And it simply means you're here because somebody shared information with you, usually a family member, a friend, a neighbor, or whatever. Let me give you a hint about that. It isn't that we doctors don't, well, there's a lot of reasons that some doctors don't believe, quote unquote, in nutrition, if you can imagine that. But here's a real simple thing. On PubMed, there's about 5,000 medical journals that are programmed into that thing. Some every week, or some are weekly, some every two weeks, some are monthly. Now, if you just do that simple math of once a month of those 5,000 times 12, you get a whole lot of articles in the course of a year. And that's the well, you get a whole lot of journals coming out. If you just say, okay, there's 20 articles per magazine, and you come up with that number, it's about a million, 200 and some thousand. Now, let's talk about the most dedicated doctor I can think of. Doesn't matter what day it is or what holiday it is, they're reading at least five journal articles every day. At the end of one year, your doctor is only 239,000 years behind in their reading. <laughs> now, what I'm simply saying is, we doctors don't have all the information, and sometimes it's good to get it from wherever it comes from, especially when it's backed up by incredible science. 